Always a good day when we can get someone as legendary as Ice Cube on the show. Uh, before we get into some big three basketball, I think I know the answer based on looking at your background, but I just want to know who's your all-time favorite basketball player. <laughs> Irvin Magic Johnson. Um, he, I mean, he uh, really began my love for basketball. And I used to like basketball, um, but around the time the, the, the Lakers got Magic, you know, I was actually out there playing and, and he came to the Lakers and it was it was magic, yeah. So my favorite player of all time. I got I got mine across my shoulder there, Kobe. Well, I don't know, I don't know where he ranks for you. Probably probably a close second, I would say, right? Yeah, Kobe's right there. Um, you know, one another tremendous player. Um, you know, I liked his spirit, you know, it's like his spirit, Jordan's spirit, Bird, um, Magic, you know, they had the killer instinct. Even Isaiah Thomas, um, killer instinct. I love it. What kind of basketball player were you back in the day? I was pretty good. Um, I could hold my own. You know, I had a nice uh, J. I could take you off the dribble. Um, had, had a little few tricks around the basket. Uh, so, and I could pass. So I was pretty good. All right. Well, let's, let's get into it. Tickets for the seventh season of the big three are open for pre-sale. The league will make 10 stops across the country this summer. You can watch it yeah. live right here on CBS Austin. Uh, I guess a good place to start would just be how proud are you of what you and your partners have built with this league over the last seven years? You know, dream come true type stuff. Um, you know, you have a dream, you you think it's, you know, it's perfect for the public. Uh, you think the appetite is there. Uh, you think you could sneak in with a new professional sport um, because there's like a window of opportunity uh, between the NBA finals and the start of football. And so we went for it um, and had some great legendary people uh, you know, give us a, a stamp of approval by being a part of the league as coaches, uh, people like uh, Clyde Drexler and uh, Iceman. You know, we go on to San Antonio uh, on August 4th. Uh, so I'm pretty sure Ice is going to be happy to see the big three, you know, around his way. And uh, it's going to be, you know, it's, it's just been a, a, a a hell of a ride, you know what I mean? It, it hasn't been all, you know, it hasn't been a picnic, but it has been a party. When you went to investors at first and you said, hey, here's my idea. You mentioned you guys, you know, trying to find that perfect spot on the sports calendar because it is busy and it's hard to get people's attention. And it's hard to carve out that time when there aren't, you know, those other established leagues going on. But what kind of reaction were you met with? And you said, hey, I want to start a three on three basketball league. You know, a, a, a few people looked at us crazy, like, uh, why? Um, you know, most leagues don't last one year. And so people knew it was a, a big uphill climb. But what's cool is, you know, you have those those mavericks out there, those, those guys who can see around the corner. Um, and, you know, they got behind the league and – you know, we're, we're, we're in the process now of, of selling teams. So uh, we're going to have new owners come in and, and, and assign these teams to cities. And, you know, you know, the league is going to take off in, in, in another direction when that starts to happen. So um, it's just been, a, you know, a, a great, you know, learning experience for myself when it comes to, you know, raising money for for something like this, which is a pretty heavy lift, but it's been very successful. And uh, we proved that it works. You know, now it's really about fanning the flames. Well, you guys uh, sure made some headlines a few weeks ago when you threw the bag at Caitlin Clark and offered her the, the $5 million contract. Why'd you make yeah. that offer? And how was that received? Well, I mean, she's a phenomenal player. Um, her shooting range is great for our 
four point circles. You know, we got four point shots in the big three. So we we looked at you know our league over the last seven years, and we figured if if someone was to make a jump like this, uh, a guard who knew how to shoot, knew how to pass, uh, knew how to get open, uh, was the perfect uh, fit. And look, she's a phenom. Like having her as a part of our league would, you know, the ratings on CBS would go up, 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 you know, and, and everybody would watch. And, you know, we, we think we connect her with a great coach like Nancy Lieberman and uh, who's played with men before uh, and who's a hall of famer uh, and a champion in the big three uh, as a coach. And so, we think that's the perfect match for for her to try to, you know, uh, break new ground. As she gets into her WNBA career and gets started on on that next step, is it is it just a open invitation for her? Yes, yeah, open. Um, we would hope that, you know, she would want to do both. We've made it clear that we would allow her to do both uh, if she wanted to. Um, and we'd be very accommodating for the WNBA. And um, to me, it's uh, it's a hard offer. I, I think it's an offer you can't refuse, but that's just me. Uh, last, last one on Caitlin. How how hyped do you think the crowd would be seeing her sink those four-point shots? <laughs> they would go crazy. You know, it would be a new day in sports. We've already changed the game. Um you know, so many ways. So this would just be another uh, another example of who we are. It's in our DNA. And, uh, you know, whether she plays or not, we're going to have a good time in San Antonio on August 4th. I'm actually playing the day before uh, on August 3rd. So make it an ice cube weekend and come hang out and uh, have some fun with us. I was going to ask you about San Antonio. I'm sure some of our people here in Austin would be interested in that. You know, we're kind of we're kind of just one big melting pot here in Central Texas now as this area continues to grow. Uh, but have you been here to Austin? And what do you what do you think of our city? Of course, you know I've been to South by Southwest a few times, uh, and I've had a few uh, individual shows there. I love it. I love the spirit of Austin. Um, you know, it's really about you know. To me, it's about having fun, you know, really appreciate music and artists. And you know, it's good, you know, to have a town welcome you like that. Um, and the love of music is is evident. And um, so I always look forward to coming there. And, you know, it's going to be cool to be that close. And hopefully some people from from Austin and come on down to San Antonio and and, and check us out. It's a great event. Affordable. Bring the whole family. You know it's going to be hot. So go and bring all the kids. You know, you, we won't break the bank. And uh, everybody will have a good time. Uh, any chance of, of getting you and the big three to, to the Moody Center one day? Of course. Um, I think, you know, what, what, what we got going is, is we go from city to city. It's like a rolling all-star game. So uh, we can definitely put that on the map uh, and, and hopefully be back soon. How'd you come up with that, that role in format? Cause I think that's awesome how you guys do it in there in the summer and you go to 10 different cities uh, this year. Where did the idea from that span? It feels almost uh, like WWE esque to me in a, in a way. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a blend of that, you know, watching how people really love the NBA All-Star game and uh, looking at we have so much star power. And to be able to go to cities and places that, you know, normally don't have hoops. You know, we're going to places like Cincinnati, Baltimore, Nashville, um, you know, Anaheim. Um, these places don't have – uh, NBA teams. So it's, it's great to be able to go to all these nooks and crannies. We were in London. We've done games in the Bahamas. We've done games in Toronto. So so by playing once a week, we can go anywhere in the world 
and bring the party with us. We definitely have the star power. Yeah, and I mean, we obviously uh, have great college basketball here, but, you know, I'm sure people would love to see you and then obviously on the court, you know, see some of their their favorite former NBA players that that they grew up uh, idolizing and watching. So I wanted to ask you a couple quick ones about your career. Obviously, it spans music, film, now sports. What's the one thing, though, that's left on your bucket list that you say, you know, before I call it quits, I got to I got to accomplish this? Um. Well, you know, I don't want to be greedy. You know, I've I've been blessed to be in, you know, three different major um, forms of entertainment, like music, movies, and television, and, you know, now sports. And, um, you know, we still have work to do with the big three to, uh, you know, make sure that it is um, respected as a major sport in the world. And, um and it's been fun. It's been, you know, a great experience. You know, the, one of the most fulfilling experiences of my career. So, you know, after we get this over the hump, you know, who knows? Uh, like I said, you know, I'm happy just to be in, in three different um, forms of entertainment and, and, and well-respected in each one. When fans approach you, what's the – single most common thing that said maybe something that they bring up what 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 would it be? <laughs> uh today was a good day you know that's probably one of the you know probably the things that you know they say q was it a good day um so you know to me it's a testament of, of that song sometimes they'll quote friday a lot of people say are we there yet you know it's pretty cool what does it mean to you to have that kind of career where you 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 have that range? You have your music, and then even from the film standpoint, you have "Are We There Yet?" and you have "Friday." I mean, that's that's got to be yeah. the most range I, I think of of maybe you know any celebrity of this of this era. You know, it's a dream come true for artists to to be accepted in different areas. I'm very creative, so you know, I love the fact that I'm able to to make a movie, you know, uh, and not just dream about it. And, um, and that people dig it and, you know, quote it years later and it becomes part of their, their, their lives and their enjoyment, you know, in this world. So, and, and being able to do that in sports too, bring something new that's fresh and, you know, uh, feels, uh, you know, just new, you know, we've been, We've been sitting in the NBA for a long time, and it's great to have an alternative to to that form of basketball, you know. So I'm just living the dream, man, having a good time and uh, hopefully making people, you know, happy. Yeah, and just last last question on the big three. Anything that you think I left out? Anything that you, you think people should know about you guys going into your seventh season now? Well, you know, it's six games uh, for the price of one. You get to see the whole league if you come out there, you know. So, you know, it gets to Joe Johnson and, you know, Jeff Teague, Paul Millsap, uh, Leonardo Barbosa. Swaggy uh, P? Jason Richardson. Uh, Swaggy P is coaching now, you know. Okay. Swaggy, you know, hung him up. He's a coach now. But we got Mario Chalmers and Michael Beasley and, you know, it's just a league that's full of players that still hungry, still got a chip on their shoulder, still want to show the world that they can play at the pro level. And uh, it ain't easy out there. It's called the big three for a reason. <laughs> they play hard nose, play the game like it's supposed to be played. Tickets on sale. Come on down to San Antonio and hang out with your homeboy Ice Cube and in the big three. Thank you for watching. Please hit the subscribe button and get the latest news by downloading the CBS Austin News app.